If you're like me, one of your favorite things about a school bus are all these windows, and they're awesome. They give you a great view, they let in tons of light, you can open them up for ventilation. What's not to love? Well, they're leak prone, drafty, and they let in lots of light, which can be the enemies of trying to maintain a comfortable, dry, climate controlled interior. So unfortunately, it's my opinion that for my bus and for most people who wanna live in a bus full time, these windows gotta go. I know, it pains me. The aesthetic loss is huge. It really makes a bus not feel like a bus anymore, but well, we gotta make a bus feel like a home if we're gonna do this thing right. On today's video, I'll be going over what that process looks like in my roof raised schoolie so you can understand how we replace these windows with insulated double pane RV windows that have screens so that you can do that on your own project. Of course, you can leave the original windows. It's your bus. You can reseal them. You can do all of these things, but these windows have systematic design flaws that are always going to be working against you. Everything from leaking water to being drafty to giving condensation a place to dribble down into your walls, they're going to cause you headaches. In fact, we even had a past client who left their windows only to find mushrooms growing out of their walls a couple years later. I love mushrooms, but not in my walls, please. My name's Chuck Cassie. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to go inside the shop, take a look at the windows I picked out for my bus, show you how we install those, and hopefully by the end of this, you'll feel confident doing the same on your own project. Thanks for tuning in. Now, when people hear me say that I don't like school bus windows, it's not an aesthetic judgment. I love the way they look. What I don't love is the way they leak. And here is a good example. So this is on a Bluebird, but a lot of buses are the same. This window sits on a flange here and that flange just dead ends right there in a corner. And they are completely reliant on this bead of sealant to keep out water. And anytime you're relying on just the sealant alone, it's a pretty precarious situation to put yourself in on your build. I mean, look, the sealant, <clears throat> granted this bus is old, but this sealant is pulling back and shrinking and it's gonna cause issues later on. And if you look in here, I mean, right in that little pocket where my finger is, any moisture that gets in there has a really easy path to the inside because it's so challenging to seal corners like this. Let's go inside. See, we're just completely reliant on that silicone there. And if we take that out, you could probably almost see daylight. So they gotta go, unfortunately. But how great is the vibe in this bus, you know? I mean, it's pretty fun. All right, now that I've showed you you know, my thoughts on bus windows. Let's take a look at what we're gonna be replacing them with. This is, well, it's one of the windows that's actually gonna be going in my bus, and it is a dual pane sliding RV window, and it also has a latch and a built-in screen. The screen is obviously a nice feature. Stock bus windows don't have a screen, and the screen slides out of the way, you know, so you can hand cups of coffee through the window or whatever you want there. Now these windows, most RV windows, are designed for wall systems that are not as thick or as insulated as the wall systems that we'll be installing in our bus. Uh, I believe the biggest thickness that these windows can be designed for are, I think, two inches. And my wall, when it's all said and done, is gonna be a total thickness of just under four inches. So we have to get around that by making a special frame for the window. So when I order these windows, these are from Lippert, by the way, Lippert Components. Um, I'm not sure if they sell to the general public or not, <laughs> but you can hit up eBay, RV wholesalers and distributors. They oftentimes have extra windows laying around um, that you can get like surplus for quite cheap. I like the double pane, but if you can't find double pane, don't bum out too hard. Um, while it does give you improved performance, um, you know, you go from an R value on a pane of glass, which is I think slightly under one, I think it's like half, <laughs> to doubling that, which is really not much, but it is still double. And I do it because you get a little better sound dampening uh, or sound isolation as well. So anyway, these windows, they want to see a wall that is two inches thick, the ones that I order. And they have a trim ring on the inside that comes and combines with the window here and it screws together. And then the design is such that it actually traps the, the wall between this flange and it just kind of clamps 
and squeezes and pinches the wall. And that's actually how the window is mounted. There aren't screws or anything actually screwing the window to the wall of the bus. So what we do is we make a box. This is a, a wooden box made out of our Baltic birch plywood. And this box, it has essentially two frames. It's got the outer frame and then it has an inner frame. The inner frame, if you look at it, it's not as thick. That is because this is what the trim ring is actually going to pinch. So this inner frame here is two inches thick, simulating what would normally be an RV wall. And this goes in around the window and the window goes inside of it, pinches this and then it's mounted. And then when we frame our bus, we'll have our uh, furring strips dead end into the windows here, which will be held in place already by their own clamping power. And we'll frame into that, tie into it, spray foam all around it. And then when it's time to trim the windows, this will be the sort of window sill that the window lives in that we will be trimming out. So I'll give you an idea how this goes together. So let's say this is our box here. Um, we'll say this is the outside of the bus. So I will be inside the bus holding this and we'll set this into place here, just like that. Now imagine the bus skin, so you wouldn't necessarily see all of this. And then on the inside here in this window, We'll take our trim ring. The trim ring goes right. <laughs> I, need, I need three hands to do this. The trim ring will go in there like that, pinch the window, and that's what we get on the inside. And then our window is, you know, sitting out there on the outside of the bus. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, you're going to see us do it, and that will clear things up for you. When we seal the windows, we do a line of butyl rubber tape on the outside flange and um, we found that to be sufficient in most cases. You can always go back and add sealant around the edges if you like. Nothing wrong with that, just a little extra work. All right, let's go make some marks on our bus and get ready to start cutting holes. All right, so I didn't cover how we make these frames, but I hope it was pretty clear to you it's essentially just three inch, uh, three quarter inch plywood ripped to the thickness that the trim ring calls for. And then the outside box, the depth here, we cut that thickness or width to match the ad additional thickness we add with our furring strips that we frame across the hat channels of the bus. So if you look right here, you'll see we've got just under an inch and a half, and that's gonna match up with our two layers of three quarter inch plywood that will go up here. So hopefully everything finishes out nice and in plane. Now, we have got our window layout in the bus figured out. It's time to mark our holes and make our cuts from which there is no going back on. So what I like to do, um, and it's pretty easy, Generally, I keep my windows as high up as I can so that your line of sight, you know, most of what you're looking at, um, if you're a tall person like me, you're not just looking at the ground, you can actually see the horizon. So generally they're up as high as they can go. I use these heavy duty spring clamps to clamp them to this upper cross member, I guess you would call it. And then I will center it between my two ribs here. And it looks like we're pretty good. I just do it visually because um, that's the kind of guy I am, but you could grab a tape, nothing wrong with that. And then you grab a Sharpie. Now remember, when we made these frames, we made them specifically to match the dimensions of our window. So then we can just go in with our Sharpie and trace the dimensions of our frame here. Well, this Sharpie is sad. <laughs> and once we have this traced, if you noticed, all of those windows have a radius on them. So I like to use a hole saw, just because we know what size this hole saw is and it matches the radius of the windows. And I just put that in the corners here. And with the hole saw in the corners, I will go ahead, well, we have to get this actually out of the way. We'll take the hole saw, hold it up in the corners, just like this, and then I will go ahead and trace 
the radius of that hole saw into each corner. Just like that, and we'll do that on all four sides. And when in doubt, when you're tracing this, you can always trace the hole on the small side. Like when I cut this, I'm gonna cut inside my line because you can always enlarge the hole. It's much trickier to shrink a hole once you've already cut a hole in the side of your bus. All right, so the first thing we do is we grab a drill bit. I like to use, I think this is actually a 5 8 inch, but it just needs to, big enough, to be big enough so that you can get your jigsaw blade in and get that started. So half inch would probably work just fine, whatever. And I like to do two holes on each corner, one at the start and end of each radius. Find that gives me the options to get the saw in there just the way I like to have it in there. Um, you do whatever feels good for you. All of our holes are done and we now have access to get our jigsaw in and we can start making the cuts. I learned a long time ago that I really do like using the jigsaw for making these cuts, but it has some drawbacks. And one of them is that it slings hot metal chips everywhere. So when I'm doing this kind of work, I like to throw on my long sleeve welding jacket and go ahead and Buckle that collar up. Let's make it nice and warm in here. And then definitely gonna wanna wear gloves. Keep those chips off your hands. It's really not fun getting hot chips everywhere. Now these blades that we use, these are from Diablo. Um, and they make, uh, they make these blades for cutting all kinds of different thicknesses of metal. These are for thin metal. And the saw that I like to use is our Bosch JS572. It's a really heavy duty, nice jigsaw. It's really well balanced, it's really smooth. And what I like also about it is that you can decide if you wanna have just straight reciprocal motion or if you wanna have some oscillation in there. Uh, doing sheet metal work, I like to just keep it straight up and down. It's got a light that's handy, and it's got a variable speed. So I can go slow or fast. And I found when I'm making steel cuts through sheet metal, I actually, I run the, bl the blade very slow. It gives me more control, the blades last longer, you generate less heat on the cut, and that's always a good thing. And oddly enough, I feel like it actually cuts faster on the slower uh, power setting. So it's time to go ahead and get started making these cuts. Things get a little sketchy and weird always in the corners because your jigsaw is going to want to hit these hat channels. So I do some advanced techniques. Just be careful <laughs> when you're doing this. Um, go nice and slow. You can always come back in with an angle grinder and a cut in a flapper wheel and shape these openings if needed after you're done. So just main goal is to get the rough shape cut nice and clean and we'll dial it in if we need to afterwards. This is a really handy tool. It's a, it's well, it's a magnetic fixturing device for welding. But what I use this for is actually to hold in this piece while I'm cutting it so it doesn't just flop out perhaps dangerously and land on me while I'm trying to make these cuts. And now we can just remove that like so. And there is our window opening. I'll be the first to tell you that that's not the cleanest cut in the world, as you can tell here. But what I'll be doing is coming back in with an angle grinder and a flapper disc and sneaking up on these lines. Because of the tight proximity here to the hat channel of the bus, it's really hard to get the jigsaw in when you're making this cut. See, I was able to get a lot closer down here. Um, 
Just ugly cut, don't judge me, folks. So I'm gonna come back in with the angle grinder because this is just 18 gauge, it's real quick work to come in with an angle grinder and just clean these up, just right like that. And we'll go ahead and deburr this and get it nice and smooth. And if you want, at this point, you can hit it with some primer, although in theory, this should never be getting wet. If it is, you've got bigger problems on your hands. Good old angle grinder. This is a flapper wheel, I think, what are we at? 40 grit, you could do 80. Um, you'll see it, it removes material pretty quick. So I'm just gonna go in here, sneak up to those lines. I'm trying to leave the line everywhere. I don't wanna take the line, cause then I risk having this cut be too big. Got that opening nice and cleaned up, and we are ready to do a test fit of our window. Everybody's favorite part. So we'll take our window, and we're just gonna check and make sure we get a good fit, no interference anywhere, and it's able to pop all the way in the hole and bottom out. Also, a little pro tip, there are these little plastic clips on the sides of these windows sometimes. Um, I'm sure they have a function in the RV world, but uh, they just get in the way when you're doing windows like this on a bus. Another thing to look out for, these windows have a seam on them oftentimes where the frame comes together and they'll put a big glob of sealant on it. And depending on how tight you cut your hole, you might have to shape a little section out to allow for that to fit. But that to me looks like a perfect fit. I'm very happy with it. So we'll go ahead and get the butyl rubber on the back side of this flange and get ready to install it. All right, let's talk window sealant. I really love this stuff. And this stuff here is butyl rubber tape. And what I like about it, it's essentially the consistency of chewing gum. It's quite sticky. It never seems to dry out or harden. And this stuff is freaking watertight. I really like it. So what we'll be doing is taking this and applying it around the outside flange of the window, the part that seals against the bus right here, this flange. And we'll just do a nice, a run of that all the way around the perimeter, peel off the backer, and then we'll be ready to go set this in the opening. Um, you wanna definitely make sure that your opening is good to go because once you set this in, this butyl, well, it can get messy real quick if you gotta take it on and, or take it up and down a bunch. Let's go ahead and get this taped up. Here. We have our opening, we like that. Our window has the butyl tape applied to the outside flange. It's ready to go in. So I'm gonna go ahead and install, just, I guess, hold this up again with my handy dandy spring clamps. This is a lot easier with two people if you have that luxury. Ben's not in the shop today or he'd be helping me, I'm sure. But we'll just get that centered how we like it. Now, I'm gonna go on the outside, stick the window through, and then I'll jog in here and we'll fasten the trim ring to the window using these black anodized or painted, I'm not sure, they come with the windows, these black self-tapping screws. One thing that's important to note when you're installing your windows is to make sure that you install them right side up. A lot of times, windows can be installed in either orientation, but not always. And one clue are the weep holes for the drains on the window. Those need to be on the bottom, which makes sense if you think about it. So you definitely wanna make sure you install them correctly in that regard. And for slider windows like this one, I like to, if I have the option, do it with the sliding pane to the rear. That gives any type of wind and water that's coming down the road in my opinion, I think it just makes it a harder time to get in through this pane here 
when the front pane is protected by this and then there isn't a flat part there to catch everything, if that makes sense. So we're gonna put this window in, get it centered and square in the opening as good as we can. I think that looks, that looks good. I'm happy with that. And then I'm gonna grab one of my clamps and go ahead and just clamp that window in place. Now that we're on the inside, we can go ahead and fit our trim ring and start screwing it on. When you go to do this, you'll see that there is a little channel in the window for these screws to go into. And that's where you wanna make sure your screws are going. All right, so we'll get a couple started. We won't tighten them down all the way, but we'll get them going so the window can't go anywhere. And then I'm gonna go outside and just once again, check and make sure that we stayed oriented and relatively square to the bus and all the chaos that's already happening on the bus. Make sure our install looks good. All right. Now one thing when you're installing these screws, I will get them all started and snugged up before I tighten them all down. Cause keep in mind, we've got that butyl rubber on the outside that needs to squeeze out. I don't want to overtax and ask these screws to do too much work all at once or there's a good chance you can uh, strip them out in the soft aluminum window frame. So I'm just getting them nice and snug. All right. And we'll just check and make sure it closes still. Hopefully it does. Beautiful. And there is our first window installed. How many more to go? One, two, three, four, five, six more to go. <laughs> with the window installed, you kind of get an idea now of what you're gonna be working with when it's time to trim out. RV windows all have a radius here, which can be annoying, but what we're gonna do, we will be finishing this off with usually a piece of something that's about three quarters of an inch wide. So that'll come up here and then that'll come across. So that's gonna close this gap down more. And then a lot of times we'll make just like an angle block or something to tuck in there or a piece of, uh, you know, cut radius that slides in there for trim. There's a lot of ways to solve that problem. And there are also other ways of making these window frames. Um, you can use just a piece of three quarter inch plywood flat and cut your hole out of that and have that clamp um, by the trim ring. There's a lot of ways to skin the cat. This is just how we do it here. We like to do it this way, but uh, you know, don't get too hung up on this. I hope it just explains for you one possible solution to your window conundrum. All right, so here we have it from the outside and you can see where that butyl really squeezes out as you tighten it up. And this stuff will continue to squeeze out <laughs> for a couple of days. So we usually let that happen and then we'll come back in and trim it. These are those weep holes I was telling you about. So you wanna make sure you remove the plugs here. And because this window is reversible, it's got ones at the top too, but we'll just leave those in for now. Just real quick, wanna clear up something that might've been confusing when I was talking about how we determine the thickness here. So we strap our buses with two layers of three quarter inch plywood like this horizontally. And we make our window boxes so that it matches up. Hope you can see that there. So that when we're framing, we finish all in one nice, even plane. It's really important. Save yourself some headaches, uh, shimming your framing and your windows and stuff. If you just can hopefully nail that on the first try. And I also want to talk about one more thing before I let you go. So this window, it's going to go here. It's double wide. So I'll be cutting out that center rib there. In truth, you're probably okay. Just doing it and sticking it in there. 
But this is one situation where I actually come in and I welded in a piece of one by two, uh, 14 gauge rectangular tube as a header. It's welded up here, over here, and also at the front, just to be safe so that when I'm installing this paint, this window, we're not losing any integrity. And I've done the same where this window is going on this side. Just another little detail for you. Well, I hope if you're considering swapping the school bus windows on your rig for RV units, this video was informative for you. Now, if you hadn't done a roof raise, the process would be the same, and I still would recommend removing all of the windows that you're getting rid of and skinning over the side with fresh sheet metal and then cutting the openings in, building frames and doing it just like you saw me do. I think that's the best way to do it. Maybe you've come up with something better. If so, let me know in the comments section below. I think it's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Chuck Cassie, and if you like this content, if you're building a bus, make sure you subscribe because there's gonna be new and informative videos at least every week, followed by a midweek live chat where you can come at me with all of your questions and comments and concerns, and I'll do my best to address them. Thanks for tuning in. Take care of each other, and we'll see you next time.